Okay, this is uh, section 4.7. And really, this is uh, story problems, but it's uh, optimization. Optimization. And so, um, we want to be able to do a couple things here. We need to convert uh, story problems into mathematical statements. And then secondly, um, we want to be able to find the absolute or global uh, extrema uh, when the uh, domain may not be when The domain may not be a closed interval. Okay. So, um, just as a reminder, um, reminder maybe at the bottom here. Uh, we know how to find. Uh, we can find a global extrema. On a closed interval, right? That was the closed interval method that we had. Okay, so what we want to do uh, in this section is we want to uh, take a look at um, uh, extending that idea to um, global extrema on an open interval, or not open, but maybe uh, an extended interval. So, for example, uh, let's take a look at a, what we're going to call the first derivative test. First derivative test uh, for absolute extreme and extreme values. Okay, so uh, suppose that the derivative, uh, if I'm on a number line here, uh, and suppose that I've got a point C here, right? And I know my derivative changes sign from uh, plus to minus at the point C. What can I say about the function globally? Well, uh, the function has to be increasing here, right, and then decreasing here, and so you could say then that at x equals C we have a global x, right, because um, if the function is always increasing on this side, or always positive on this side, and always negative on this side, Right, then the highest point must be at point C. Good, similarly, uh, you can go in the reverse, right? So this is my number line, and I'm imagining that at point C, I go from something like minus to plus. Then what can I say? Well, this is always decreasing, then this is always increasing. So therefore, at x equals C, we have a global uh, min. Good. And of course, what I'm thinking of here is that uh, f is going to be continuous on the entire interval here, and in fact, differentiable. Right? So I, I don't want to deal with any functions that uh, aren't differentiable in this sense, right? So this is the first uh, derivative test for absolute extrema. So you might uh, notice that you you know you could try doing some other things as well, right? If you look for where your first derivative changes sign a couple of times, right? What happens if you have something like I decrease and then I increase and then I decrease, right? And suppose that this is all the function does. Then you know you're decreasing, increasing, decreasing, and so in this case, can you say anything about a Global max or min? Uh, no, there's. We don't have enough information here to tell if we do have a global max or min. But suppose you do have something that maybe looks like uh, a b c, and you have a negative or a decreasing function, increasing, decreasing, and then always increasing afterwards. 
right? So then it's going to be decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. Well, at this point, right, you know that uh, either it, uh, it looks like A or C, right, we would have a global minimum, right? And so we could say we would have to check just A or C then to see if we have the global min. And so in all these, in these different situations here, we may have to uh, modify our test, but we won't get that complicated. Okay, so let's uh, get into the story problems. Uh, so the way the video will work is I'll probably just do a couple of examples per video. So they may be kind of short. Uh, so let's try some, some examples just to see what's happening here. And we'll try to uh, get some common themes. Uh, suppose I have two non-negative numbers. Non-negative meaning it's positive or zero, such that uh, the first plus the square of the second is 10. Find the numbers if the sum is as large as possible. All right. So typically in this in the story problems, we would draw some kind of picture, but in this case, we don't really need to draw a picture. But we do need to set the notation. So let's go ahead and set the notation. And we should define our notation initially, right? Either by picture or by uh, writing down what the definition is. So in this case, we're going to let x and y be the two numbers. Right, then we want to find the maximum, or we want to maximize x plus y. Well, if we were to stop there, right, then there would be no maximum because x and y, there's no restriction on x and y here. And so you could just say, well, x and y could just be any, as large as you want to make them. <laughs> okay, so uh, there must be some kind of restriction on our domain here. And so we see up here that what the restriction is, uh, we have, oh, by the way, I should write uh, x is greater than or equal to 0, y is greater than or equal to 0, just to remind myself. Uh, the first plus the square of the second is 10. So what does that mean? Well, uh, we could say we want to maximize this such that the first plus the square of the second equals 10. Right? And so uh, then you see, and this is going to be a real common theme in our problems, is the function that we want to find the optimum of is going to be a function of more than one variable. But then there's going to be some kind of side constraint uh, that we can use to uh, as a substitution. And so here, for example, we could write x is equal to 10 minus y squared, and then we can write our original function all in terms of y. And so now we'll say that we want to maximize. Uh, instead of x, we'll have 10 minus y squared plus y. And what's is there a restriction on y then? Um, notice that y has to be bigger than 0, right? And so, for example, if x was 10, y would be 0. And so y has to be between 0 and the square root of 10, right? Good. And now what we've done is we changed the problem into an optimization problem over a closed interval. And so now we can use the closed interval method to solve for this. Good. And so now let's differentiate to find the critical point. And so we have uh, minus 2y plus 1 equals 0. So y is equal to 1 half. And so now, if we put in our numbers, uh, I guess we could say y and the uh, 10 minus y squared plus y, right? Because that's what we want to maximize. Uh, we'll have 0, 1 half, and square root of 10. 
Uh, so if I plug in uh, y equals 0, I get 10. And what happens if I plug in the square root of 10? 10 minus 10 would be 0, so that would be square root of 10, right? And then what happens when I plug in 1 half? Looks like I get 10 minus a quarter plus a half. So that's uh, 10 and a quarter. Right, and so that is the maximum. Right, and so therefore my x is going to be uh, 10 minus uh, 1 quarter. Right, so that's 10 minus y squared. And so, uh, and then y is equal to uh, 1 half, 0 0.5. Good. All right. Um, so in the next video, we'll just run through a few more examples. Um, yeah, and we'll go from there.